so I kind of mentioned this a few times. Uh, so there's the classic caches, which are not ideal for modeling a lot of things, especially if you care about the on-chip network or getting reasonable bandwidth or modeling hierarchies that are not just a hierarchy of crossbars. Um, Ruby is really great because it's very, very flexible. Um, but a lot of the protocols in Ruby are not very um, uh, realistic compared to the kinds of protocols uh, that exist today. Um, I think, you know, I, I would encourage you to build your own slick protocol if you want to be looking at some kind of new cache coherence research. So what should you do if you're not looking at new cache coherence research but you need high fidelity um, cache coherence and uh, on-chip network modeling? Well, I would encourage you to use the CHI protocol in Gym 5. Now that said, we are still working on improving things and making sure that this works for a variety of different cases, um, but this is definitely the future um, of Gym 5, of Gym 5's memory system. So uh, real quick, so uh, I don't have any slides on this, although now I regret that. Um, so CHI stands for Coherent Hub Interface. OK, awesome. I get a thumbs up from the back. So Coherent Hub Interface. This is a protocol that is specified by ARM. I assume the license is relatively liberal. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't have submitted it to Gym 5. Um, but so the, the license must be liberal enough that we can use it. Um, so this is uh, kind of the follow-on to AMBA. So uh, this is like the next generation of AMBA that allows us to do uh, multiple different kinds of hierarchies as well as different kinds of uh, interconnects. So ARM, the company, did contribute this to Gym 5, um, but now we are uh, maintaining it going forward. Okay. So what we're going to do is go through an example here. We're going to build a simple two-level cache hierarchy with private L1 caches and a shared L2 slash directory, um, or what they call it in Chai, which is a home node. So the code for this is going to be in Materials Developing Gym 5 Model 07 Chai Protocol. OK, so let's dive straight into it. So we're going to use some components that already exist. So um, right now, in the standard library, the only Chai protocol that we have um, is a very simple private L1 cache. So it doesn't, in, just a private L1, no shared caches at all, with a point-to-point -point network. And so we're going to kind of build on top of that in this example um, to make something, some, something slightly more realistic. So we're going to uh, use this. Um, so you can kind of look at this if you're interested. Um, but we're going to import this uh, cache that already exists this private L1 uh, Mozi cache, which was created for the private L1 Mozi hierarchy. Um, OK. So from this, we are going to create a shared L2. So the shared L2 is going to be an abstract node. So this abstract node um, mostly defines a bunch of boilerplate uh, for us, so we don't have to worry about this. So um, for the shared L2, um, all we really care about is the size and the associativity. So we'll add those as parameters. Um, so we have size and associativity as parameters. Um, and then we also have to pass in the Ruby network so things can be connected together and the cache line size. Um, we have to pass in the cache line size to give that to the abstract node because the abstract node needs the cache line size to do something. OK. So we have our parameters, size, and associativity that we care about. Um, now we're going to create the cache. So we kind of mentioned this last time when we were talking about Ruby. Um, the Ruby cache object is where the data is stored. So this is where we define our size and our associativity. So this um, shared L2 object that we're making here this is the controller that we were looking at in the MSI protocol yesterday. This is the controller in the um, Chai protocol. So we need to pass a Ruby cache into that controller. 
And I also want to just point out that we can use any replacement policy that we want. So in this case, we're going to use RRIP um, for the replacement policy. But if you go to this file here, the replacement policies.py, there's a huge number of replacement policies from FIFO to second chance to most recently used to all the RRIPs, ship, and other things as well. OK, so we have our cache and our cache. So now we need to set the chai parameters. So the way this chai protocol works in Ruby is that there's one cache controller defined as the um, Ruby state machine. And then that one cache controller has a ton of parameters on how it behaves. Um, so this, if you were to look at the slick code for this, it's very confusing um, and really, really big. Um, and they do a bunch of things that I would say never do in slick, but this happens in chai. Um, and what we end up with is needing to configure this, um, configure each controller or configure each node in our system to act as the right kind of controller. So this is a home node. So we need to set these uh, parameters. So is HN says is home node. Enabling DMT and DCT are two optimizations to essentially allow a three hop, well, I guess DMT, DCT, and SD, sorry, DMT and DCT are, optimi are, are parameters to enable optimizations to allow a three hop protocol where you can send an eviction to an L1 or to, to a um, higher level cache and that higher level cache will directly send the data to the cache that's requesting it instead of going through the home node. That's what those two things do. And then SD um, is allowed share dirty, which is like the um, O state in uh, MOSI. So then there's a bunch of other type parameters that we need to set as well. Um, so I will kind of let you go through these and you can make some educated guesses as to what you think they are. I also need to make educated guesses as to what I think they are. Um, there's lots of parameters here. Some of them are obvious, um, such as allocate on read shared, which is when you get a read shared request, do you allocate in cache or not? Um, Deallocate on unique, um, things like this are somewhat obvious, um, but there's a bunch of parameters that you need to set. And you can set these parameters to change it from being mostly inclusive to being mostly exclusive. I think you can also set it to be fully exclusive or fully inclusive based on uh, how you set these parameters. Um, there's also some other reasonable defaults that are set down here. Um, and so, you know, since this is a home node, it should never receive DVM requests. So those don't really matter. Okay. So other than exactly what all of these parameters mean, which I'm not going to go into, the uh, documentation on JimBub's website actually does a pretty good job. Um, any questions on setting up a specialized node in Chai? OK. So we have our um, shared L2 now. So this, this node is going to act as a shared L2, which is what we want it to do. So the next step is to create the cache hierarchy. So again, I'm going to fill in this constructor. So you can add whatever kind of parameters you want for this cache hierarchy. I just care about the L1 size um, and associativity and the L2 size and associativity. Um, and then in incorporate caches, we have a lot of stuff here for you already. I'll note that right now we're using a simple point-to-point -point network, though we're going to um, improve that in a minute. Um, we have our virtual hierarchies. And then we need to create this um, L2 node. So I'm going to copy this code. So this just creates an instance of our shared L2 node. Um, and kind of annoyingly, we have to manually set this Ruby system on it afterwards. Um, and then we already have creating core clusters, which looks like the code we were looking at the other day for creating core clusters, um, except it's using the Chai L1 cache instead. 
And I think that's all we need to do um, in this um, uh, in this cache hierarchy. There's also stuff to set up DMA for our full system support. And then down here, um, the network, we have this thing called connect controllers that connects everything together. Um, this is how the point-to-point -point network works. We will look at a different example um, here in a minute. Okay, so now that we're done creating our um, cache hierarchy, now we need to create a run script, which I have this run test in the same directory. So we've imported a few things here, so now let's just create the run script to test this cache hierarchy. So we're gonna import our private L1 shared L2 cache hierarchy, create a test board with a simple generator, and then we can run this. So let's run it and see what happens. So if we run gem5, let me get in the right directory. Material 0307, run gem5. Chai, run test. And I did something wrong. Oh. So I forgot to call super init in my init function. That's a nice useful error message there. Now it should work. Okay, it takes a minute to run. I'll note that as it's running here that um, Ruby is going to take longer to run than the classic caches because it's um, doing a lot more uh, detailed simulation. Great, so now it finished, and we can look for our um, uh, stats. So I'm going to grep for generator bandwidth from M5 out stats. And so you see the read bandwidth and write bandwidth are, what is that? maybe 30 gigabytes and 10 gigabytes per second. No, three and one gigabyte per second, respectively for each of the generators. Okay, I'm not gonna do this now because it takes a few more minutes, um, but we can also run full system simulation with this, um, although there's a bit of a caveat which there might be some bugs. Um, and if you run the full system, I'll flip over to the slides here. So when you run full system, it's going to fast forward using the KVM CPU and then switch to the detailed timing at the work begin. Um, and it takes about five minutes to complete. And then when this completes, you would see uh, stats such as the IPC was 0 0.15 um, and the average missed latency was 185. Bit of a caveat here. I did not carefully debug all my uh, settings of chai, and so there's possible that there's some bugs, especially in full system mode using DMA. Okay, so that is a very brief overview of how to create your own cache hierarchy with the chai protocol. Um, as I mentioned, right now in the standard library, we only have a very simple private L1 protocol or cache hierarchy. Um, there's a couple of cache hierarchies um, living in our research groups. Um, GitHub that we call Novoverse, which is modeling a mesh interconnect that looks somewhat like ARM's coherent mesh network, um, which you could find on things like the Ampere Ultra and NVIDIA Grace. Um, but this, that hasn't been pushed upstream yet. 